Leprechauns Never Lied, written and illustrated by Lorna Ballion. There was this old thatched hut nestled in a glen near the river. Ninny Nanny and Graham lived there together. Each had only the other and no more. They lived simply on potato soup, and their needs were few. The thatch needed patching, the potatoes needed digging, the firewood needed gathering, and the water barrel needed filling. But Ninny Nanny was lazy, and Graham was ailing, and there was not but blathering between them. Graham nagged, Ninny Nanny dawdled, and that was that. The rain came drip-drop through the thatch. The potato sack emptied, the chimney pot grew cold, and there was but a bit of rainwater in the barrel. It came to be there was little to eat, just cold rainwater soup, pure and simple. Oh, woe is me, tis starvin' we are, moaned Graham. What am I to do with such a lazy child? Ha, Graham, hush your nagging. I've been thinking to catch a leprechaun. He's bound to tell where he's hidden his gold, and tis rich for life will be, boasted Ninny Nanny. Is it raven you are, girl? To capture a leprechaun is no easy thing, said Graham. Ah, so I've heard tell, agreed Ninny Nanny, but we could make right use of a treasure, so I'll give it a try. Well, it was as easy as tripping over a log, which is what happened. Ninny Nan Nanny was tramping about, looking every witch weird for a leprechaun, when she tumbled head over petticoat and fell plump right on top of one of the wee fairy men. He howled like a banshee and wiggled and waggled, but Minnie Nanny had him firmly by the seat of his britches, and that was that, Let me go! shrieked the angry leprechaun. Sure and gladly, I'll let you loose, but I'll know first where your treasure is hidden, said Minnie Nanny. Ah, tis under the straw pile, but you've not the wit to find it, rumbled the wee man. We'll see about that, said Ninny Nanny as she carried him, squirming and kicking to show Graham her prize. And wasn't she pleased? They tied him firmly into a potato sack, and Graham watched that he didn't waggle away. While Ninny Nanny started pitching straw this way and that. Sure it is witless and lazy she is, hissed the leprechaun to Graham. She'll find no treasure in the mess she's making. I heard that. And you'll not fool me, leprechaun, said Ninny Nanny, and she lifted the straw gently, searched through it bit by bit, and carried it up to the roof, out of the way. Sure, and the whole of the straw pile was upon the roof, and not a mite of gold to be found, and that was that. Tis a liar, you are leprechaun, bawled Ninny Nanny. Ah, a liar I'm not, hidden under the straw it was, but I just now recall that the mice was nosing about, so I moved it under the big oak tree and covered it with branches, said the leprechaun. Hey, stack the branches here by the door, Ninny Nanny, said Graham. I'll sort through them for any stray coins. Ninny Nanny carried and stacked the branches. Graham examined every stick. The leprechaun scowled. Ninny Nanny raked up the last few twigs and found no speck of treasure under the tree, and that was that. He's lying again, Grom, held Ninny Nanny. Ah, a liar I'm not, hidden under the tree it was, but I remember now that I moved it to a safer place, mumbled the leprechaun. Speak up and tell me where did you hidden the gold, demanded Ninny Nanny, shaking him till his wee head wobbled. The river! squawked the leprechaun. I put it under the river! Sure, and I'm not believing that. How did you get it under the river? And how am I to get it out? asked Ninny Nanny. I told you where, but I'll not tell you how, rumbled the leprechaun. Ninny Nanny got the bucket and started to bail out the river. She was tossing water onto the riverbank at a furious rate. Tis witless you are, girl, laughed the leprechaun. Can't you see all the water sliding back where it came from? And he was right, of course. So Ninny Nanny emptied her bucket into the water barrel till the barrel was full to overflowing. But the river was as deep as before, and that was that. 
Sure, it is a liar you are, Leprechaun Whale, Nitty Daddy, and tis throwing you into the river I am. Oh, don't be hasty, girl, begged the Leprechaun. A liar I'm not, just forgetful at times. I remember clearly now, I buried me treasure in your very own potato patch. I'm not believing you, Leprechaun. Tis another liar telling me, said Nitty Daddy. Then tis foolish you are, girl, said the wee man. For leprechauns never lie. Aye, they've heard tell. They're bound by fairy law to tell the truth, said Graham. Ah, I believe that when I see it, grumbled Nitty Nanny as she went to fetch the spade. Nitty Nanny dug and grubbed about the potato patch. Graham smiled to see all the potatoes scattered about. The leprechaun scowled. Nitty Nanny dug the potato patch wide and deep uprooting all but one of the potato plants. Sure, and all she had to show for her efforts was a hole in the garden and a heap of potatoes, and that was that. She threw down the spade in disgust. I've had enough of digging, and I've had enough of lying leprechauns, bawled Nanny Nanny. Let him loose, Crumb, for we'll be needing that sack for the potatoes. So Graham untied the sack, and whoosh, shooting star of the night, the wee man vanished. Ninny Nanny and Graham supped on good, hot, hearty potato soup, and then fell soundly asleep in their warm, dry hut. While out in the potato patch, the wee leprechaun was busily digging up the last potato plant. He carefully lifted out his pot of gold, muttering, Aye, leprechauns never lie! As he trotted off, to find a safer hiding place. And that was that. <laughs>